This is a great spot to, to, to look at. This is where the landscape, where the two fine columns are operating through like. Okay, Davy. so this is one of my favorite monuments in um, Tipperary. Uh, this is the dispatch monument. Um, we're here in Greig, and we're kind of in the middle of, we're between Clonmel, Rose Green, and New Inn. It's only a couple of miles that way. So, uh, I love coming here. I often call here just on the way home from work, you know, work in Clamel. I, I, I think that it's it's a little bit out it's it's out of the way a little bit, but where where the the action happened basically was there was a shed up there, roughly where the tanker is now, a bit further on. And um the dispatch centre was a, a cattle shed basically, an old cattle buyer and it a nail up on um the wall of the shed. So the dispatch uh, carriers, which were invariably women, or even um, young teenagers, uh, we had Bridget Gleeson from Clamel and her daughters. We've a good few stories about it. My own grandmother came from Feather to this exact spot and told my aunt a couple of the stories and came on a horse often across fields. But they'd bring their messages from the different companies. Uh, this was guerrilla warfare, obviously. They'd bring their messages. Uh, they'd be left in the shed above. So the actual dugout where 71 where the guerrilla war uh, fair was was prosecuted from is about three miles that direction up near rose green i can bring you around to that as well and that was called 71 and that dugout could hold about between 30 and 40 men it had a, an oxygen supply it had its own lighting system uh, ernie o'malley the first time ernie o'malley was brought to 71 dugout uh, they brought. He walked over the door a couple of times, and they had a bet on to see could he find the entrance. He knew it was there somewhere, couldn't find it. But so 71 was guarded by. Uh, it was called a special half company, and they were made up of locals. A lot of them were related. Um, it was on Davin's farm, Ratsala, who were a big family in the movement as well. So when the dispatch was dropped every day, you'd have one of the uh, company that were guarding 71 would come down across the fields and he'd take whatever messages were there off the nail and if he had some other messages to be brought back he'd leave them on another nail so the thing about the dispatch center is the people bringing the messages did not know where 71 was so basically the obviously the less people that knew where the main dugout was for safety reasons um the better like so it was a well kept secret but 71 was under constant surveillance by the half company which is made up of about 35 to 40 men and often it, it might look like a lad working in a field or whatever. I'll, they were guarding uh, the, the, the dugout because if that dugout was seized, that was the heart of the operation and the third tip brigade would have been in serious trouble. The, the war would, would have stopped, like, you know. So this monument was put up in 1972 and um, um, Sean Fitzpatrick from Tip Town uh, unveiled it and he was one of the surviving members. And it's, lovely, it's a lovely monument. It's simple. But it, it says it all, like, you know, you can read it there when in days when terror stalked the proud land of the Gael, when oppression denied us our heritage, proud young people passed this way in defiance of death itself, bearing on their persons to and from the Brigade Dispatch Centre, the messages upon which the waging of the fight for freedom in Turtip Brigade area depended 1919 to 1921. Uh, do cum glora de Augustinora this memorial then has been erected by the 1st Battalion IRA veterans, their relatives and friends, 1972. So it's lovely and it's a nice Celtic cross in it.